materials you need to make one of the mosaic coasters. So we're going to make the coasters in a jar lid, and we've done this before using salsa jar lids, we've used peanut butter jar lids, and this one is actually a cookie tin. The inside's really pretty, it's silver, but we want to spray paint the outside because we don't want this to show, so we have silver spray paint for that. For tiles, we are going to use 3 8 inch vitreous glass tiles, and for each coaster we have a little bit of a different color story. Yeah, you need about 40 for each coaster. We'll do a layer of those, and then to decorate on top of that, we have a little filigree, and we kind of have a different one for each. Yes, and these are from the craft store. And then to go on top of that, we've got a little cicada charm, and then to decorate around those, we've got, let me get all four of these out here, we've got two charms that are heart little locks, very cute. And then we have two little charms that are keys. And to fill in the, any open spaces, we have these little gears. These, we discovered at the hardware store, are called locking washers. And we have a big one and then a smaller one that fits inside. These are so cheap. You'll buy tons of them because they're so cute and kind of steampunky. Very fun. And for all of these materials, we're going to use Quick Grip to glue them into the jar lid. And then we'll tell you about the resin. So the resin is a two-part mix, and to mix it, you need four straight-sided cups. We'll show you why you need so many cups later. You'll also need two paint stirrers, and these are the wooden kind that you can get at the hardware store. And last but not least, you should wear protective gloves and safety glasses. So we spray-painted our lids silver, and they look nice, and now we're going to turn them over, and we're going to do a layer of mosaic tiles in the bottom. The mosaic tiles have two sides. There's a side that has ridges and a side that is nice and smooth. We want the smooth side up, so we're going to apply the glue to the rough side or the side with ridges. And we're and just going to use... We're going to use our quick grip for this. Let me open that for you. Great, thank you. Those little ridges are there to be kind of grabby, so they give the glue something to grab onto. So that's how you can remember to put the ridge side down, because that's the glue side, the grabby side. And gluing these in, there's really no magic to it other than don't use a ton of glue. Although if the glue splooges out, it kind of disappears once you pour in the resin. The resin kind of uh, is the same, looks the same as the glue. So it becomes invisible. So we're just gonna keep gluing until the whole layer is done on the bottom. And we have all these beautiful purple tiles in there. So we have our, all our tiles in there in the bottom layer. They look great. And now we're ready to do our embellishments. We're going to start by gluing this brass filigree in the center. So I'm just going to put glue all around on the back of that. And these um, stampings, they're called sometimes, or filigrees. We find them at bead shows. We've gotten them at the craft store. We've ordered them off Etsy. We just pick them up whenever we see them because they're so cool. And we're just sort of eyeballing the center there. Doesn't need to be perfect at all. And I think we'll put the cicada on top. That'd be fun. And the cicada came in, it was like a little bag of charms and all the charms were bugs. So there was a fly and a dragonfly and this handsome cicada. And we thought they just went perfect with steampunky things. We love all these little bugs. And we love these mixed metals too. He really pops off that brass like that. Beautiful. Right. And next, do um, you want to do the locks? Those little oh, yeah. locks? Let's They're do cute. two locks and do them like, what, like we'll one Do them here opposite each other? Yeah. yeah, I think that's nice. Just put some glue on the back of that. And steampunk is kind of locks and keys, so that is perfect. That looks good. And you'll want to check your, your items before you glue them in and make sure they fit inside your lids. If you're using a more shallow jar lid, you don't want your embellishments to stick up above the edge of the jar lid because you're going to pour the resin in and the resin won't go over the edge of the jar lid. That's really important. You can run your finger across like that or a ruler. A ruler's a great idea. Just to make sure everything's going to be down inside and we'll have a layer of resin over the top of it. Like we had a really cute brooch we were going to use, but when we tested it, it was just too tall. It was going to stick up too far. I dropped that one. 
There we go. Just mush it around. And mush them around. Yeah, and then we'll just fill in those four spaces with our fabulous locking washers. We just absolutely love these. We love the look of gears and steampunk, but it's hard to find actual gears. I mean, you can yes. get bicycle gears, but they're kind of big. They're kind of big. These are the perfect size. Those are great. For a little project and like they, this. They seriously cost nothing. Oh my they're, gosh, they're so cheap. They're pennies. And we did the four coasters. We decided they should all be related, but a little bit different. So each one's a different color and has different bugs, but they also have some of the same elements. So they all have some kind of charms like hearts and keys, and they all have locking washers. It's nice. It makes them look like a set, but because each one is slightly different, they're a little more artistic. They're interesting to look at. Yeah. So we're just going to wait for the glue to dry. You can check on your glue to see how long it takes to dry. And once it's all cured, we'll be ready to pour on the resin. So we're ready to mix our resin. And what we want to do first is pour equal amounts of resin and hardener in each cup. So I'm going to hand you that. So we've got this one That's is our resin. resin, and I'm going to start by pouring, we're going to do just enough for this one coaster. So I'm going to pour that in. Maybe a third full. Yeah, that seems right. A little more. Okay. How about that? Can you see that? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And now we, we like pouring one and then the other because it gives it time to settle. Right. There's no, no rushing this part. So... Now this is the hardener. We're not going to pour it in with the resin. No. It goes in its own cup. These are the first two cups. Right. This is why we have four cups here. So I'm going to pour into this one. And one of them's more viscous than the other. It takes a little longer for it to flow and settle. So let's see what that looks like. Does that look like equal amounts? Do you need more of anything? Let me look here. We want to make sure it's right. So it's worth taking a minute to look. Mixing, make sure it looks right. Mixing exactly the same amounts is the most important part. It looks and good. It thoroughly mixed. They look even to me. It looks like the same amounts. Okay. I'm going to hand you that. The next step is to pour both the hardener and the resin together into the third cup. Okay. And so once she does this, I'm going to start the timer and time it for two minutes. Okay, so I'm starting to pour those in now. And it's very important, the mixing mixing thoroughly is important, so I want to make sure that get those poured. And then I'm going to take one of the paint stirrers, and I'm going to scrape out what's left. Yeah. Scrape that off, and do the same with this other one. And I'm scraping the bottom also to get all of that in there. There's a little yep. bit left there. Good. We have paper towels because it's yes. a little drippy. Yep. And now I'm going to scrape that off. Yes. And I'm going to start stirring and Kitty's going to... I've got the timer going. Okay. She's going to stir for two minutes. She's going to use the bot. That's why we chose a flat stir. She's yep. going to scrape up off the bottom. And I'm scraping, scraping the sides side. too. And periodically as I'm stirring, I'm going to stop and scrape off what's on the paint stick. Because sometimes and what the stuff that's left on the paint stick is either resin or hardener, but you need it all mixed together. That's right. Any resin that is not mixed with hardener won't harden, and so you don't want that in your project because that will remain tacky or sticky. It never will cure. So we're still stirring here. I'm going to scrape again. But as long as you stir thoroughly and use this four-cup method, we've always had success with it mixing have... perfectly and hardening perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to pour into a, our fourth cup. This is a new clean cup. Brand new clean cup. And she's going to scrape everything in there. Yep, I'm scraping with the first paint stir here. And I'm starting the timer. Okay. So we're going to start, but she's going to use a new stir stick. The new stir stick means any unmixed resin or hardener that was on that old stir stick is gone. It's that's not right. in the project. Any old unmixed hardener that was up on the sides of the third cup, it's that's gone. Because now we have a new cup of all mixed. And All now right. you want to be ready to pour because this is going to start hardening up. So we have okay. our project here. Great. And I'm going to pour a little at a time and kind of drizzle it down in all the little gaps. So she's covering the whole area. It's very viscous, so you um, it kind of will fill in slowly yes. around each item. And I'm going to pour enough that it covers all the embedments. If we don't have enough mixed here to cover everything, if there's any embedment that's sticking up over the top, we can let this cure and put a second layer on. Yeah, we just have to wait for it to cure thoroughly and then we're good to go. 
We've waited 15 minutes and we can see that we've got some bubbles forming on the surface of our yeah. resin, which is to be expected. Yeah. Um, there could be air pockets underneath the little embedments that we have. That's one reason. And also the hardener and the resin, when they do their chemistry thing, they create some gases and so little bubbles appear. Most of them have popped. They come up to the surface naturally and pop. They but do. if you have a few left, there's a trick to getting rid of them. You exhale over the surface of the resin, which sounds strange and looks stranger. So I'm just going to hold my hair back. Yes, definitely hold your hair so you don't get any resin in your hair. This is called degassing, and it's actually part of the resin pouring process. Yes. So the carbon dioxide from your exhale is what pops the bubbles. So it's not blowing on it. No. It's not like blowing on soup, and it's not, you can't do it with a hair dryer. It has to be your exhale. Actual CO2. Yes. And another trick is to use a toothpick. Some of the big ones you can just pop like that. And some of the littler ones, if you're having trouble getting at them, you can scoot them over to the side here. That's like a good that. little tip. And then you can exhale on them. Oh, perfect. So we're just going to let this, actually we're going to keep degassing it yeah. for a few more minutes. Yeah. And then we're going to place it on a level surface and cover it with a box that's dust free. And that's just to keep more dust from settling. We don't want any dust settling on our beautiful resin. Exactly. We're going to let it sit there for 72 hours. That's the cure time for our resin. And then it should be hardened. We let the resin cure for 72 hours and our coasters turned out great. We hope yours turn out great too. If you have any questions while you're working on your coasters, leave us a comment and we'll reply. We're here to help. Happy crafting. Mm -hmm.